Right, guys. So today we're going to start talking about uh, differentiation. Uh, so if you remember in the last video that I shared is basically what differentiation means is that it's the instantaneous change. So for example, if we have this, these are x and y, and we have this function, uh, okay, and what we want to know, or actually let me draw, draw another function, we have this function, and what we want to know is the rate of change of this function. So using the difference quotient, we can find an average difference between a range. So suppose we take this and this. So between these two points, what we can find is the change in x. And what we are going to see is that x goes from this point, this level, down here. So let's say this much. And so what we can say is that when x1 changes, when x changes from x1 to x2, y changes from y1 to y2. It's two y1 to y2. But this is, of course, not instantaneous change. This is change over a limit or over a range, range of x1 to x2. But if you want to calculate the instantaneous change, which is the rate of change at exactly this point, or the rate of change at exactly this point, the rate of change at exactly this point, that is when we bring differentiation into it. And you know, that, that's called instantaneous change. So for the difference quotient, what we effectively have is change in y due to change in x. That doesn't change for differentiation, but what we impose on this uh, relationship, this equation, is that this change in x, the limit, of change in x is that this is approaching zero. So change in x is very small. It's not zero, but it's very small. And as a result, we are able to calculate the rate of change at one specific point and not range. So that's basically what differentiation is. Now, when we're trying to differentiate uh, different types of function, of course, we need different types of rules. So these are the seven that we are going to look into. So this first three, our uh, first four, is going to be lecture one of differentiation. And then this final three is going to be lecture two of differentiation. So today we're going to be going through constant rule, the power rule, product rule, and quotient rule, right? So let's get started with the first one, the constant rule. So let me start off by drawing a diagram. We have this. And suppose we have the function y equals to k, where k is any number. Well, actually, let me just give a number. Suppose y equals to 5. This is what we have. So we have x here. We have y here. And if we draw y equals to 5, if this is 5, this is what it's going to look like. y is equal to 5. And regardless of the value of x, the value of y is not changing. Now, what is the rate of change of this function, of this function y equals to 5? It's not changing. So if we take limit, change in x is 0, change in y due to change in x, the interesting to notice is that no matter what happens to the denominator, doesn't matter by how much x change, y will not change. And so this is always equal to 0 doesn't matter x change from 3 to 4 or 4 to 5. 
or it changes from three to 30 billion, change in y is always zero. So that is basically the constant rule, what, which tells us is that if we have a constant function, y equals to k, where k is any number, then dy dx is zero. The rate of change of the function is zero. It's a straight line, there is no change. Pretty easy to understand. Next we have, this is done, so next we have the power rule. The formula for the power rule, let me just write that down first and then I will explain. If we have x to the power n, then dy dx is equal to n x to the power n minus one. Okay. So let me give you guys an example. Suppose we have a function which is y is equal to x squared. Okay. And if you drew the diagram, this is what it will look like. We have x here, we have y here. Well, that's not accurate. It looks something like this. This is y equals to x squared. Okay. And we want to calculate the rate of change of this function, okay? If we differentiate it, dy dx, what we are going to get is if we follow this function, so power is two, so two will come to the front, x to the power n minus one, so two minus one. So we basically get two x to the power one, or basically two x. This is the rate of change of the function x squared. Another example, suppose we have y equals to 3x squared plus 5x plus 7, okay? And we want to calculate the rate of change of this function. We want to differentiate this function. Okay, so let's do that. So dy dx, which is effectively, remember, the change in y due to a change in x. This will be equal to, so nothing happens to the constant three times. Now we have an x squared. So two x to the power two minus one. Plus, over here we have x to the power one. So five times, x to the power one minus zero, uh, one minus one plus, and we've already seen how to differentiate constants. When we differentiate a constant, that becomes a zero. So what do we have? We have six x to the power one plus uh, one minus one is zero, x to the power zero is one, so just a five. So when we differentiate this, we get this. One more example, y equals to x to the power one by three, plus seven x square minus four. What happens when we differentiate this? dy dx is equal to, the power comes to the front, so one by three, x to the power, one by three minus one plus seven times two x to the power two minus one minus when we differentiate a constant it's a zero so what do we have here one by three x to the power one by three minus one so that's minus two by three plus uh, seven times two that's 14 x to the power that's really it for the power rule. Uh, just remember this formula, I'll write it down again. If we have y equals to c x to the power n, 
and we want to differentiate this. What we get is C n x to the power n minus one. This is the formula. And if you remember this, you've got the power rule. And so the next thing we are going to look at is the product rule. Okay. So suppose we have y equals to dx plus 2 multiplied by 7x minus 1. Suppose this is what we have. And we want to calculate dy dx. Now let me say this is multiplied with this. So the easiest way of uh, differentiating this would be to first simplify this and get rid of the brackets. If we do that, we get 21x squared minus 3x plus 14x minus 2. So 21x squared plus 11x minus 2. And now we can easily differentiate this. We get dy dx equals to 21 times 2 x to the power 1 plus 11 minus zero. So we get 42 X plus 11. Excuse me, that's the differentiation, okay? So it's straightforward. However, what would we do if we had, let's say, seven X minus one to the power 10? Now what would we do? We can still simplify this, but what would we would have to do, it's a very lengthy process, we would have to take 7x minus 1, multiply it with itself 10 times. That would take a lot of time, that would give us a huge equation. Multiply that equation with 3x minus 2, that takes more time, more complications, and then differentiate the whole function. Now that's you know, obviously a tedious process and we want to find something easier to do. So what the product rule allows us to do is to take functions, equations that have a product in it and allow us to multiply it without expanding the function. So just write this down down here again 3x plus 2 7x minus 1 so what we are going to assume let's suppose u is equal to 3x plus 2 v is equal to 7x minus 1 now if we want to differentiate them dy dx the rule the uh, the formula is u multiplied by dv dx plus v multiplied by u dx. What that simply means is u is 3x plus 2. We multiply that with dv dx, which is we differentiate v with respect to x. That gives us a 7 plus v, which is 7x minus 1. We multiply that with du dx, which is when we differentiate u with respect to x. So that gives us 3. And now if we simplify, what do we get? We get 21x plus 14 plus uh, 14x minus 3. Oh, sorry, not 14. 21. So we have 42x plus 11, which is exactly, okay, this was 11, I uh, made a typo, but this is exactly what we had. So see this answer, this answer is exactly the same. Let me give you guys another example. We have 3x squared minus 9 multiplied by 17x 
Now we can always multiply and expand them and then differentiate them. But if we want to use the product rule, what we have to do is first we assume let u be 3x squared minus 9 and t be 17x plus 2. If we do that, then we just apply the formula. The formula, remember, dy dx is simply u times dv dx plus v times u dx. Let's apply this formula. u is 3x squared minus 9 times dv dx is differentiating v with respect to x. That gives us a 17 plus v, which is 17x plus 2, multiplied by du dx, which is differentiating this with respect to x. So that's 6x. And so we are left with uh, 51 x square minus uh, how much is this 153 plus 102 x square plus 12 x and so if we just simplify we get 153 x square plus 12 x minus I hope I've done the calculation correctly. Let me just check one more time since I tend to make quite a few mistakes. Uh, oh, oh, I think I've got it. So this is basically the product rule and the formula is this. Okay, so that's product rule done as well. You see differentiation is not difficult. It's quite simple. Product rule is done. Now we're going to do quotient rule and that's one whole lecture done in like what 15 minutes quotient rule quotient rule is used when instead of a product we have a division so let's use the first thing so this is what we had used 3x plus 2 7x minus 1 suppose this is what we have 3x plus 2 divided by 7x plus 1. Okay, so instead of a multiplication, now we have a division. Right. And what would we do in this case? In this case, we apply the quotient rule. The formula, once again, is dy dx is equal to uh, all right, so of course you have to make this assumption first. u is equal to 3x plus 2. v is equal to 7x plus 1. Once you have done that, formula is v times u dx minus, not plus, minus u times dv dx. And this whole thing is divided by v squared. The only difference from the, from the product rule is that instead of a plus, we have a minus here, and then we divide the entire thing with v squared. So let's see what happens. v is 7x plus 1 times du dx is 3 minus u, 3x plus 2 times dv dx, which is differentiation of v with respect to x, so a 7, this whole thing divided by v squared, 7x plus 1 whole squared. So if we simplify, we get 21x plus 3 minus 21x uh, minus 14 divided by 7x plus 1 whole square. So 21x, 21x, they cancel out. And we are left with minus 11 divided by 7x plus 1, 2. And that's really what quotient rule is. Let's take a look at another uh, problem. So suppose we have uh, y equals to 
Uh, in fact, one, let me just find a problem from the book. Just give me one minute. So, okay, so I suppose we can start with this one, which is AX squared plus B divided by CX plus D. And A, B, C, D are numbers. They can be any number. And we want to find the DY, DX. So first thing, as you all know, we assume that numerator is U and the denominator is V. Once we have done that, we just apply the formula. So dy dx is equal to V, which is Cx plus D multiplied by du dx, which will give us 2ax minus u, which is ax squared plus b times dv dx, which is c divided by cx plus d squared. And we can simplify this, and that will give us 2acx squared plus 2adx minus acx squared minus bc divided by cx plus d squared. So you see that uh, we can simplify this and this. So what we are left with, 2ACX squared minus ACX squared, we have ACX squared plus 2ADX minus BC divided by CX plus D squared. And that's the quotient rule really. So see, let me just scroll all the way to the top. Now, at the beginning of almost every single semester when I'm taking equal to a one, I hear from a lot of students that they're afraid of differential calculus. Uh, they're probably worried that they're going to do very bad in the course because of their, because there's so much differentiation in it. And whatnot. So let me just ask you guys, I mean, we haven't finished the chapter. There's three more parts left, of course, but we've done more than half of the chapter. It's taken us 15 minutes. We've done the constant rule, the power rule, the product rule, and the quotient rule. Is this really difficult? The constant rule tells us that if we have a function, which is a constant, any number, then the differentiation is zero. The power rule tells us that if we have something like this, where x has a power, when we differentiate, all we do is we multiply the function with the number, and then we subtract one from the power. So for example, when we have x to the power two, we multiply x to the power two with two, and we subtract one from the power and that leaves us with x squared. And that's the power rule. There's really nothing else to it. There's the formula, I've written it down. We have a power, so we multiply it with the power and we subtract one, that's it. Then we have the product rule. When we come across functions that are, multi there are two parts of the function and they're multiplied with each other. And all that we have to do is we identify those two parts, assume one is u, one is v, and then just apply the product rule function. Once again, I've written this down as well, and there's really nothing else to it. Then the quotient rule, instead of multiplication, if we have two functions that are divided, same thing, we identify those two parts, u and v, and then we just apply the formula, the quotient rule formula. And that's really it. So this like differentiation is what chapter seven and chapter eight. We've done half of chapter seven already and hopefully this hasn't been too difficult for any one of you. The idea is just to learn the rules 
And differentiation, as I've said already in the very first lecture, differentiation is quite easy. So, you know, just don't be as afraid as you were perhaps at the beginning of the semester. If you've, if we've managed to get through matrix, we'll get through differentiation as well. <laughs>